Hey everybody, it's uh, Randy Ray at the Literate Texan here at Driftwood Ranch in Texas. And this video is titled, How to Journal Like Jared Henderson. And uh, the reason I call it that is because he wrote a video, or published a video, called How to Journal Like a Philosopher. And uh, it's a great, succinct introduction to how to keep a journal, which a lot of people think they want to do, but they aren't sure how to get started. And, you know, he spends the first 30 seconds explaining it real simply. You know, there's a three-step process. You get a journal, you get a pen, and then you write every day or whenever you feel like it, either one. So I am going to, there's more to it than that. I mean, it's a seven minute video, but I am looking to start journaling, which is something that I always start, but never keep up with. And I want to adopt Jared Henderson's practice of keeping a journal just to try it on and see how it fits. And I want to talk a little bit about what the rest of his video says. But first I want to point out, I got the same journal that he says he likes using. It's a soft cover, uh, black dot. It's got dots in it. You can't see the dots on screen. I'm almost certain. But, uh, but I got the same, it's Loisterm, I think is the name of the brand. But it's really lovely. It feels good in my hand. I think it's going to work great for this process. He said he likes fountain pens. I like these Pilot G2 gel pens. And I buy them in packs of four off Amazon. And they come, let's see, there's black, blue, purple, and green. And I believe I've got a red one around here somewhere. Which reminds me of a story from when I was student teaching. And it's a real short one. I'm just going to mention it here real quick. Uh... When I took education classes at UNT, one of my uh, instructors there who was teaching us how to teach had suggested that we move away from using red pens to grade papers because red's threatening color and suggested we use like green or purple or something else. Well, then I went and did my student teaching and I shared this with, the, with my cooperating teachers who were mentoring me and they laughed and they said, well, red's okay. It's supposed to be threatening. If we're writing on it, that means they got it wrong. If they get it wrong, it's supposed to be threatening. So anyway, you know, they were obviously from the old school and perhaps they were right. I don't know. I did not have a career as a teacher. But anyway, I digress. So once you got the basics, you know, you've got the, and you can go cheaper than this. I mean, you can get a spiral notebook for less than a buck at the dollar store and finding a, a pen isn't hard either. So, but the important thing and the, the thing that everybody seems to struggle with, as Jared points out, and I will link to his video down below, is that, uh, you know, what do you write about? And uh, he also covers how to use a journal for self-improvement and talks a little bit about the philosophy of journaling for self-improvement. And, you know, I, I probably make a little bit of fun of some of the self-improvement guys on YouTube, but Jared's not like that. You know, there's some self-improvement talk going on there, but he comes up from a philo philosophical point of view rather than I want to sell you a book about, uh, you know, seven daily habits that'll make you a millionaire. It's just a different, it, it, there's an authenticity there uh, that I admire and uh, there's, there's a practical edge to what he publishes too. So what he suggests is the following structure, which I thought was really interesting. Um, you write a paragraph about something that happened to you that day. Okay. Doesn't matter what it was. It could be, but it, but it has to be a d discrete event. You don't want to cover your entire day. Just one particular incident that you can cover in a paragraph. Okay. And keep it purely factual in that paragraph, but it should be something notable. You know, you're going to curate the experience that you're going to, you're going to jot down in the journal. J journal. Blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> I don't edit my videos. I just sit here and talk, folks. So, number two, you write a paragraph about something you did well, something you did that you're proud of, something that you achieved, some kind of success, some kind of victory. It, it, it seems like the implication is that it relates to the event that you were talking about. And then, number three, you write about something you did not do well, and... You, in, in other words, you're going to try to identify some kind of problem. And again, this might relate to number one and two already, but uh, 
This would include any kind of mistake you might make, a bad habit that you fall back into. For me, my biggest bad habit is, is procrastination, although sometimes I can be needy with my friends too. So, uh, and, and that's all very interesting. That's three paragraphs. But the fourth paragraph is the most interesting part because that's where you take all this stuff that you've already written and you write a paragraph or more about how that fits into the bigger picture of your life. Okay, so the premise behind all this, and first of all, I want to point out, I, I everybody knows I go to a support group for, uh, for alcoholism, but I've tried multiple support groups, and one of them is Smart Recovery, which is not an anonymous program, so I'm happy to talk about it here. But at the Smart Recovery meetings that I attended, they were discussion meetings, you went around the room and you shared something that happened to you last week, something you did right and you're proud of, and something that didn't go well. It's, it's the same format that Jared uses here. So I thought that was really interesting. But what I don't remember is them going into detail about constructing a narrative for your life. And to me, that's the most interesting part of, of his journaling practice. So, and, and the idea behind this, and we studied this when I took philosophy in college. I took about 12 hours of philosophy. I, I was pretty shy of a minor, but but not too terribly shy. And one of my mentors was a philosophy professor. He, he was wonderful. But anyway, the, the, the premise is that what distinguishes us from animals is that we tell stories about our lives. That's what makes people people. And uh, deciding how the different re events in your life relate to each other is part of writing the story of your own life, which, you know, if you're going to be the author of the story of your life, then why wouldn't you want to be a good author? You know, because... The premise is that this narrative about your life that you're constructing is who you are. And that reminds me of a concept that I learned about in 12-step programs where, you know, you turn your life over to the care of a higher power, God, but it's the God of your understanding, of your own conception. It's basically your own imaginary God. So you can picture that God and whatever qualities that God has at your leisure. I've got a friend whose hired power is, is Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation. That's how she visualizes him. Um, you know, I have my own conception of God, but it's a similar idea. If I can imagine a higher power, I can also imagine who I am and what my story is. So one of the main reasons I wanted to, and I didn't want to just recap Jared Henderson's video about how to journal like a philosopher here. I wanted to do a little more than that what I'm going to do is now that I have a journal, okay, I'm going to commit to adopting Jared's practice for the next 30 days and then make another video about how that went. And, and when I finish that, you know, I might pick up another journaling practice from someone else and try it. Uh, I know Steve Donahue put out a great video about how to journal with his practice outlined in it. And, and I like the idea of that too. But anyway, I don't have too much more to say about this. I'm not going to make constant update videos to this. But after 30 days, I am going to look back and see how I feel about adopting this practice. And surely I can get a seven-minute video out of that. Somehow, Jared managed to get his video about how to journal like a philosopher in under seven minutes. And I'm at almost at nine minutes now. But there was that great story about my student teaching experience that I had to include. Anyway, the weather's cooler here, but it's still important to stay hydrated. I'll be back with more videos soon. Thanks for watching.